And we're back with the breakfast. Chris Kende Wandu joins us this morning via phone. He's uh, a United Kingdom arbitrator. Uh, Chris, it's good to have you join us. Good morning and happy Easter to you. You know, I'm always, every time I have to introduce you and then I remember that you are an arbitrator of the United Kingdom. Then I also remember the issues, you know, bilateral relations. So quickly, let's start off with this one. Uh, Nigeria has been put on the red list uh, in terms of recruitment, international recruitment. I mean, uh, medical practitioners cannot just be recruited without a government-to-government -government agreement. H how does this make you feel? And what exactly do you think this is? Is there any connection with the recent bill that has killed the second reading? Oh, no. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, the issue, uh, you are talking about the one that uh, the advisory that was issued by the uh, United Kingdom. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Um, don't forget, if taking it from it, it's not about Nigeria. Uh, about 53 countries were involved. So it's not just about um, Nigeria. So we cannot even make it a Nigerian affair. Uh, but um, the issue as it were is that, for me, uh, it is an opportunity for us to look inward and continue to make sure that we do the right thing by making sure we provide the necessary environment, enabling environment for our practitioners to uh, practice. When you look at what is happening, uh, the rate at which our um, medical uh, uh, practitioners, doctors, nurses, and the like um, traverse all parts of the world and to practice, you've come to see that it's so much of brain drain for us. We don't even have enough, but our government is not even doing the necessary thing to be able to make sure that these professionals, uh, we're able to retain them. It takes so much to be able to bring up these professionals, these doctors, these nurses, but we just treat them a bit like, even to the extent that Minister of, um, uh, Minister of Labor at a point was saying that we have more than enough doctors that anybody that wants to go out can go anywhere. That is even a medical doctor. So, um, it is just, a, it is so, it's so terrible. Uh, what's that? But uh, I think it's more of an advisory from the latest report we have even this yesterday. The uh, Nigeria Medical Association and NARO issued a statement that that will not affect the migration of Nigerian doctors. Let's even take it for let's even take it that United Kingdom is place is placing some kind of a restriction on doctors and medical uh, practitioners from this part of the world. What of other countries? United Kingdom is one out of several hundreds of countries across the world, and Nigerians can find themselves anywhere they want. So, to me. It's no big deal, uh, sincerely, uh, between the two of us. I don't think it's a big deal. All right, then let's, let's quickly turn our attention to the Punch newspaper this morning. The Punch says, APC kicks us nodding senators insistent Senate presidency. Uh, Ndume, Kanu, and Niger senators poised to contest, says Senate needs competent hands. Again, this is always, you know, the conversation when you talk about zoning. Any Muslims aspiring to be Senate president lacks respect for constitution. This is according to the vice chairman. APC yet to decide on zoning, but won't allow another Saraki Dogara scenario. This is according to the spokesperson. These are riders you find underneath. Now, still looking at the punch, more interesting headlines on the way. Buhari should suspend fuel subsidy removal, declares the marketers. <laughs> Uh, also, you also have markets saying, on the other hand, hey, we're planning to have about uh, dispensers of gas stations, 30,000 of them. United Kingdom's restriction can stop doctors' uh, movement. This is according to the Nigerian Medical Association. Just as you have said, uh, Chris Kane Wandu, poor reconstruction will cost $800 million, says NPA uh, boss. I take that again. Port reconstruction will cost $800 million, says the MPA boss. It reminds me of the $800 million that we're also borrowing to cushion the effect of, uh, you know, subsidy removal. Again, Lagos FCT residents celebrate as uh, grateful for surviving cash crunch. So you could see uh, pictorial representation. Don't I just love Nigerians? We just have a way of, you know, staying alive and just be happy despite the situation. Enumerators indicated for sexual harassment will be dismissed, and MPC is quoted to say, and we'll just take this one quickly as we move away 
uh, from the Punch newspaper. Nigeria unemployment rate to hit 41% in 2023. This is according to recent ranking. Uh, should we be worried as a country? Uh, it's a question that's begging for a lot of answers. Then we turn our attention to the Guardian newspaper. The Guardian says Nigeria's industrial base weaker over poor credit support from banks. Uh, that's, that's, that's what you find there. And still ahead, Buhari undertakes last official trip to Saudi Arabia as he salutes Dangote, who turned 66. Uh, you'd see a picture of the president waving. It's okay. You have a, a safe trip right there. And World Bank sees 2% output growth in 2023. At age or at 95, struggle continues for better Nigeria, says Adebanjo. And at uh, 80, Biden considers re-election in 2024, just as Trump is also putting his head out there. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a lot. But we also have more papers. Uh, we'll just turn our attention to the Daily Trust now. The Daily Trust says consumers grown over epileptic power supply. Uh, situation worsening heat. Access to water amid Ramadan. Uh, situation worsening heat. Uh, access to water amid Ramadan. It's not something that, you know, they can talk about. I just think that some basic things should not, shouldn't be rocket science, honestly. Uh, Muslim clerics faithful accuse this cause of sabotage. Electricity companies blame low allocation from national greed. And then, you know, that's also something that you need to also consider. But then again, we also have, uh, we have the capacity to evacuate as much as we are producing, even if we're not producing so much from national greed. Arrest of Kano Singer escorts, please, uh, commercializing responsible for abuse. And then $22 million dollars. Kalabat Channel dredging. Intel's contract costs my job. Well, uh, that's also another conversation. World Bank to advocate debt restructuring for developing countries. And this doesn't come cheap, trust me. Resident doctors reject bill mandating five-year service for doctors. Uh, how to secure your bank account from fraudsters. It's more like an editorial, some sort of security concern. Buhari embarks on an eight-day visit to Saudi Arabia today. And uh, the reports say that this might just be his last, right? You can't never tell. Bear attacks as sacrifice for new Nigeria. Obi tells supporters. That's it. We would look at the leadership now, just uh, before we have our guests. APC had daggers. Dawn over zoning of uh, NAS leadership, 48 days to go. Presidency defends uh, President Muhammadu Buhari's performance. Tambor petitions INEC over uh, releasing of polling units for rerun. Then again, you find insecurity. Remain focused. Army chief tells troops. Well, these are the headlines we take this morning on on on, on the paper review. Chris, are you still with us this morning? I'm here live and direct. Okay. <laughs> then, then let's start off with the punch now. I, I'm sure that you are itching to share your thoughts, or, but I can't wait to hear what you have to say on this one. The uh, whole back and forth that's going on with the APC now, and, you know, generally, who wants, who controls, you know, the tent assembly? Uh, this has been a back and forth. APC is kicking as northern senators insist on Senate presidency. On the other hand, the likes of Oji Uzo Kalu is also saying, hey, he has to come to, you know, the southeast. That's how he should be. So the issue of zoning again, we're back at it even for the tent national assembly. What are your thoughts? Well, um, it's, I would say it, it, the leadership of the National Assembly is that of the APC to lose, um, as we say, um, because APC uh, has, has the um, majority membership in both the House of Representatives and the Senate. So, expectedly, you'll be expecting that they will be able to produce the leadership, uh, the main leadership of the of the of both chamber, We're talking about the senior president, uh, deputy senior president, the speaker of the House of Representatives, and also the deputy and other principal officers. Um, but um, the way it is, and it, it has always been with APC and some other some other political parties, that when it comes to power sharing, there is always this tussle. Um, um, but when we look at it from 
what has happened uh, with the election of um, the president, uh, the president-elect, you come to realize that for the APC, the national chairman of APC is from the north. The president-elect um, is from the south, southwest, as it were. Um, and the uh, vice president is from the northeast. So, uh, ordinarily, people have been saying that, well, it has to, this has to go to the south. Uh, when you're talking south, are you going to microzone to the southwest or the south-south? That is the question. Then there's also this, uh, this religious balancing. And you know, the issue, I've always said time with a number that we, our politics is premised on three factors. One, ethnicity. Two, religions. And I just, I, I, I choose the third one, which I look at as capacity to be able to perform and labor, which we hardly look at. But religion and uh, ethnicity plays a vital role. So if the president and the vice president as it were elect are Muslims, you are looking at the possibility that the next um, Senate president, who is going to be the number three years within the ranks, is going to be a Christian. But I said, it is theirs to, to lose. But um, let us not, uh, we may, we may I, I use the word we may, witness another uh, what we call coup uh, within the International Association of Spiritual You know what happened in 2015, where the APC, that just one power, was really dying on what to do with the leadership or uh, to pick a leadership. Somebody else, they have somebody in mind, but they are not able to put their ass together. And before you knew it, some members of the Senate quickly gathered themselves together and elected somebody that was not even recommended by the party, and that is the person of Senator um Sarak Bukola Saraki. That's how he became the president of the Senate with the assistant of those in the opposition. I hope that lightning will not strike a second time this time around. But wherever it is, they should be able to put their to ass together. But if they don't, well, the 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 major, minority party may also connive with members of the APC and put the rug off there. So we're expecting that um in the next few weeks they'll be able to decide on what to bet. It seems everybody wants to be senior president. Both the uh, 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 elected representative from the north and the south. But let's see how this pans out. Uh, Chris, except for you and I, uh, <laughs> I'm not sure that you know we want to become the Senate president. Uh, that's on a lighter note. But um, I I'd also like to, we're still staying with the punch now. Buhari should suspend fuel subsidy removal, uh, declares marketers. Now, uh, oil marketers are saying that the president should. Uh, suspend subsidy removal. Do you agree with this, marketers? The, this current uh, regime says it is not going to suspend um, uh, subsidy removal. It has said time and time again that that is going to be a problem for the incoming government. So there is no way the government, just, the government that has barely um, less than about seven to eight weeks to go, less than seven weeks or eight weeks to go. I don't think the gov this government will, will start with self responsibility of the Modi subsidy or not. Don't forget that subsidy has been provided for till about um, May or June this year. So that issue has been taken. So the so the, the this current government is neither here nor there. They have already said that they are not going to do. It. And the incoming uh, president, the president elect, I'll say that he will hit the grand running. So the marketer should be talking to this president elect, not the outgoing. Um, so the president elect in his uh, numerous speeches have said that he's going to remove subsidy from the one. How he's going to do that, I don't know. Um, but you remember, if you, uh, you remember what happened in Kenya, uh, when, um, uh, uh, current president of Kenya was elected, the day he assumed office, he removed subsidy. And you, in the last few weeks, you've seen riot, riot going on in, um, in Kenya, some cities in, in Kenya. That has to do with economy, not just only about removal of subsidy, but also because of the rising cost of commodities and food items. So um, I think it's something that we trade softly. I personally think that this is the way to go. But before we can do that, are we doing the right thing? If we've done the right thing, as I said most often, I want to get into where we are today. Promises we are made in 2015. I'm talking about this current government. I don't look back at the at the PDP or food. I'm talking of what the government promised us. The president, this APC government, promised that they're going to revive existing refineries, that they are going to build new one. Not a single refinery has been built as the, the president Buhari is living in a few days' time. Not a single one. 
Now we are importing practically almost 99.9% .9 of our fuel consumption area. And I continue to say that we seem to be the only country in the world that produces crude oil but imports well. So on to be able to say, some people say, oh, the, the government has no business in business, that government shouldn't be building refineries, that they should be private. So whichever you look at it, we must revive our um, refineries. We must build new ones to be able to refine. If we don't, we'll continue to go. We're just postponing the evil day, which will eventually come. And that is the situation. They've been waiting on Dangote Petroleum. It was supposed to come on stream last year. It couldn't come up. They say it was December. It didn't come up. They say January. It didn't come up. How long can we continue to wait for that? And I've said it time with that number that we might just be putting all our eggs in one basket, depending on Dangote, because that is an individual. That is so. What means that all of us will just sit down and wait. Whatever they're going to decide that is the price of petroleum is what is going to be. Despite the fact that the government have bought about 25% equity into the petroleum um, refinery, that is not going to be a solution. We need to revive our refineries. We need to build new ones. That is, and that in this, we will save most of the foreign exchange that we use in buying the, the, this petroleum products from other, other countries. That is the way to go. If we don't do that, we are just blinking in the, in the dark. Mm. Well, but again, with all of these issues that you have raised, do you think that uh, just like the marketers are saying that, you know, there should be a suspension of this particular policy? Well, uh, personally, um, it, it, as I said, it's postponing the evil day. Postponing, if you know how much we are spending on subsidy, uh, on subsidy we we'll continue to realize that if we push that into certain sectors, we won't be where we are presently. We, 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 I personally believe that we, have, we should be able to do the way we subsidy. But it should be a gradual disengagement. It should be a gradual thing, not in one sweep. You say you remove subsidy. If you remove it, we are looking at, uh, from what we've had, it could rise up to 500 naira or up to 750 naira per liter. How many Nigerians are? And what's that? You touch petrol. You touch every aspect of the, our economy. You touch every aspect of our lives. Prices of goods and services will go up. And ordinarily, the landlord will increase his rent. That's why the fact that he didn't use petrol to, to build the houses that has been over 40 years or 50 years. He will increase the rent. You are going to have so many... <laughs> I'm sure you are laughing. But that is the fact. Anything we touch, we build. So I believe that we can have a gradual remover. But while we are doing that gradual remover, we will be make sure that we are also channeling most of this one into reviving our, uh, our, our refineries and building these new ones so that we can be able to, along the line, I can say within the next one or two years, we can be able to have refineries where we can refine our products locally and stop this importation. That in itself will bring down the cost of this product because what we're, what we're experiencing now is that whenever there is a cough within the international community problem within the country it affects the prices of you see what is happening now between russia and ukraine that in itself is also affecting the prices of uh of fuel so if we refine it locally the prices will come down but if we don't no matter how we look at it we'll continue to grow we are talking about doctors trying to move out nigerians are moving out in, in truth smes are dying the unemployment is about close to 40 to 45 percent. What are we talking about? But I, I really don't know these things that you're saying because, uh, uh, you know, just a few days to go, 48 days, uh, the presidency is still defending uh, President Mohammed Buhari's administration and his performance. And you are here reeling out all of the ills that are going on in our country. Are we in the same space? No, we are not in the same space. We don't. Let's uh, um, <laughs> you know we live in two different worlds: those in government and the, the ordinary, we, the ordinary ones. Okay. You know when they live in that, they are uh, this thing. Why will say that? You know the uh, Agama lizard, the first one, the Iroko tree. Say if nobody praises you, you praise yourself. What of what do you expect the government to say? Of course, they said in one of if you look at one of the newspapers today, the the spokesman of the president was talking on the national program yesterday and saying that eight years, uh, eight months of uh, Buhari sickness deprived him of capacity to effectively perform when he started. Is that why he was elected? Femi Additional said that it's one of the national news, but I watched the program on one of the uh, national, um, in, a in a political program last night. But Nigeria did not elect anybody to give excuses. You were elected to be able to deliver. They have then been able to deliver. We, can, we have indices that we can use to judge this government. We've talked about the issue of uh, petroleum now, which will, be, will have become an abattoir. You look at electricity. What have they added? Not a single 
must be added to uh, to uh, they made about four thousand five hundred. They are living about that same one, if not less. Not as uh, they said, I go to inject ten thousand megawatts into the system every year. Not a single heavy metal. They've not expanded the, 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 the both the transmission and the, the, this thing. The discos are just uh, charging Nigerians uh, arbitrarily on a daily basis. That is that. You look at employment. I've told you now that our employment level is about close to about forty percent. How many people are about one hundred and thirty million Nigerians are within the um, uh, what do what do we call it now? Um, there's what do we call it now? Anyway, about one hundred. They came out with that statistic. Um, uh, poverty line. We are below poverty line. Over one hundred and thirty million Nigerians. So what are we? So what industries would they use to be able to tell us that they perform? I personally don't think that this government. We are worse than we were in 2015. But definitely the government will not tell you that. Those who are speaking for government will not. They, they are beneficiaries of this government. Well, you are, but you and I know how much was dollars when this government took over? Naira to dollar when this government took over? Probably about 300. Now dollar is only for about 750. So I don't know which areas. Yeah, there have been some um, improvement here and a little infrastructure here and there. But they will only tell you that, oh, we built the River Ninja Bridge. Uh, we built roads and the rest of them. Is that all there is to governance? No, of course not. Mm. Again, we're, we're back with, you know, on the leadership. Uh, we still have to talk about the issue of this bill. I feel, I feel like it's getting a lot of people, Nigerian stocking stakeholders. Uh, you have the, uh, uh, the doctors not saying that the bill to hold doctors' immigration is a modern-day slavery. Do you really think that that's the case or the government is trying to also solve the problem of the movement of our medical practitioners, which leaves us with less doctors or practitioners for as a country? So don't you it think... Is more than mod it is more than modern slavery. Okay. You cannot... Uh, in Nigerian Constitution, 1999 uh, uh, Nigerian Constitution as amended, if give room for freedom of movement, association. Nobody does, and the, that constitution is what we call the ground norm in law. It is part of every other enacted law. So anything contrary to the 1999 constitution is just a mirage, an aberration, and that is what it is. You cannot tell me that I cannot move out of my country after I've finished university because you want to keep me here and the rest of them. Let me even look at it. What have they done about the, uh, the, those of them going on medical, uh, going on uh, medical checkups and uh, abroad? Have they stopped that? We talk about the education sector that is comatose and also have a guy. What of their own children that they allow to do? They will make sure that we cripple the, uh, the uh, education system here as we were striving for years. But you have all their children schooling abroad. Have they brought up a bit to stop that? So what rubbish are they talking about? That definitely won't fly in. So they are just, it's just a rhetoric on their part. The uh, medical doctor must stay about five years before he can travel. Who does that? In what part of the world is that done? They can't even, even if they pass the bill, I can tell you that it, it will not be signed by the president. So they're just, it's just, they're just wasting their time. They should concentrate, concentrate on making laws that will improve the lives and the loss of Nigerians, not trying to impoverish us more. I just think that this guy is but, but, but Chris, but Chris why, why don't you also look at, you know, the reason why this bill was proposed? Which, what is the, what is the, what, what, is, the, what is it? To, to, to stop the brain drain. Which brain, brain drain? How they won't be drained. Forget this thing you are talking about. Forget it, Messi. These guys are just being selfish. I said they are children. Uh, all, all over the, their children are all over the world. They are in schools all over. Not of the, most of them. If you look at them, not, not less than eighty to ninety percent of their of those legislators, their children are abroad. Are they in Nigerian universities? But, 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 what but, type of brain are you talking about? But Chris, you can also take out the fact that I mean, let's see if you look at it logically. Now it's a problem that we have a lot of you know doctors who are moving uh, away from the country, and it leaves us you know, with uh, less hands to attend to the entire population of over 200 and something million persons. You and don't so solve such problem by stopping them from it. What to do is to improve the system, to make the system conducive for them, make it conducive for them to practice. If you do that, they will stay. Do you know that some states that have not paid us for the doctors for 36 months? Have you heard what happened in, it's happened in Abia State? We have doctors have been on strike for over 12 months. Have you seen some other states that are not paying them? When they talk about the remuneration that are not being paid, do you know how many times doctors have gone on strike in Nigeria because they are not being paid? Are we not in this same country? So how can somebody train up? It is like me. I have, I, I've read law. I, I, I'm a graduate of law. I start practice. 
I am practicing. You are not telling me so I cannot go out to go and practice across any other part of the world just because of the fact that you feel that we don't have enough lawyers in Nigeria. And um, you don't have that right. I told you that the ground norm we operate with is the 1999 constitution and there is the freedom of movement of any individual so that is a slide on the fundamental right of any individual so nobody no no legislation can be put in place that can stop them even if you do it doesn't stop them from stopping even if you're traveling you can stop somebody from traveling to go and find the, his way even if you get there you can just take some other courses uh, one or two refresher courses and start practicing so let them do the right thing. Let them provide the avenue for this doctor to be able to stay comfortably and do their job in Nigeria. You see doctors performing operation in the darkness because the light is you cannot provide ordinary light. So what are we talking about? Hmm. Okay, um, now, now now I'm still on the leadership newspaper. There's also one, I, th I think that this might just excite you. You talked about the World Bank and the fact that it's advocating debt restructuring for developing countries, asking that we should uh, pay attention to uh, SMEs. Of course, there's also a plan. That should sound like a cherry news, especially when we as a country, our debt profiles seem to be on the high. Uh, last time we checked, we're looking about 77 trillion naira, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Yes, I agree, but uh, it, it, it doesn't seem cheering to me. It doesn't seem cheering. Today, my just, uh, to where my just, uh, I'm just looking at probably the, the negative, negative side. It's not that people are looking at negative, but the fact is that these are the things that are in the face. And the earlier we tell ourselves the truth, the better. We are talking of the SMEs. Practically all the SMCs in Nigeria are dying. Mercy, you know that. There is no, uh, without power, SMEs cannot thrive. You see the cost of petroleum. This rule is going to fall about 100, uh, about 1,000 naira per liter in Nigeria diesel. Petroleum is very, very, very expensive. I mean, far away is, and I know how the cost of petroleum here. So you can understand the situation. So it's not just about what we need to do is to do the, make sure that the necessary infrastructures are put in place. Power is here. I've said that either. if this government alone had faced just the issue of power, in these last eight years, and we've gotten it right, I would have been very happy. I'm telling you, if all they have focused on is on power, and probably the issue of petroleum that we're talking of, about, I would have been happy because if we'll be able to improve our power sector, all the other sector within the economy will improve. The SMEs will grow. The SMEs employ close to about 75% of the population, or if not up 80% of our population. But when they don't have the right atmosphere, May I say there are some people in the, even your house. There is no single home in Nigeria. I want to uh, start to be correct. That does not have a generating set, a generator as small as at the top of my neighbor. Everybody runs on generator. We supposed have supposed to be a standby for electricity, but now the electricity from the public uh, for the public supply is not a standby for generator. We run generator about close to about twenty hours in a day. How will an SME survive in that? That is the issue. So let us develop this critical area, and I hope that the incoming government will look at these areas critically. Those are areas they should be focused on. If you can be able to, I'm telling you that we we'll drive a lot of people out of poverty because the job is not even there. So people are now engaging themselves in various uh, vocations, barbing, tailoring, um, organizing, they meet. They are doing it. Those are how other countries grow. But if the S uh, SMEs are not growing, then the economy cannot grow. And that is the fact. Well, I wish we had more time to talk about, you know, what the IMF intends for developing countries and Nigeria cannot be left out of it, even when we also have China, who is uh, a large, you know, um, creditor to, you know, this developing countries and Nigeria is lending is that there's plan to lend in arrears and there's also, you know, other plan to suspend debt payment at the initial times. Mercy, but, just a second, just a second. Yes. Just a second. The issue of lending has never, there's nothing wrong in lending to uh, um, um, developing countries. But the question we've always asked that, those money that lend, that they lent out to this developer, do they use it for the specific reason why they were given? You see that in African countries, they get this embezzled. That is what happens. They don't put it into those, uh, those sectors. And we cannot continue to. When they say they are lending you, they are also lending you at a particular rate, interest rate. That's why they are saying now that they plan to suspend it. Sorry? That's why they are saying that they are planning to suspend that process maybe at the initial time just to make it... Exactly. Easy. I totally agree with you. Yes, I totally agree with you. It's true.
Mm. All right, Chris, we have to go. I'm sure that you know, in the coming days we'll have more time to talk about this issue with the World Bank and uh, especially the fact that our debt profile is on the high. But uh, thank okay. you so much for making our time to be with us this Tuesday morning. We appreciate thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Have a wonderful day ahead. All right, then. Chris Kende Wandu is a chartered United Kingdom arbitrator. He joined us this morning via phone for Off the Press. We we'll take a break. When we return, we we'll head straight to our first conversation, where all marketers actually uh, are saying that there's plan for dispenser of gas, and they are seeking, uh, you know, loan from the Central Bank of Nigeria. Now they are saying that this is a way out, you know, of the effects of uh, the removal of subsidy when that happens in June. Stay with us.